it's time to start making changes. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the circuit board from this unit. step is to remove these uh, four heat sinks. The tools you'll need to do that is a uh, T8 Torx driver. You can just as easily use a uh, hand driver, but I'm going to use this because I'm lazy. And uh, a soldering iron. I'll use my Weller soldering station here. Um, you can try using one of the, uh, the less expensive non-temperature regulated versions, but uh, those typically don't have the watts necessary to desolder these heat sinks because uh, they are connected with these, these two hold downs for each one um, and there's quite a bit of copper there so this is a 60 watt soldering iron you might be able to get by with uh, a lesser but uh, it's very difficult to remove these without ripping the barrels out of the printed circuit board and uh, some of these are current carrying some of them are not so you want to be a little bit careful there I'm using a T8 Torx <clears throat> to uh, remove the, uh, the fasteners from these TO220 uh, FET packages. Um, you can use an Allen wrench of the appropriate size. I don't know what size that is, but uh, you can use an Allen wrench to remove these. I've done that once before, and uh, it's very difficult, uh, just to put it lightly. Uh, these are self-tapping um, screws, and... Uh, because Allen wrenches aren't long enough and you can't make a full rotation with it, I highly recommend a driver of some sort that is not an Allen wrench. to the, uh, the next one here. Uh, to do that you can just take these FETs and uh, bend them over a little bit so you can get the driver in there. But uh, I'm just going to show that one and uh, you want to continue to down and remove all four. I've successfully removed all four heat sinks from this. It took about 15 minutes and uh, unfortunately I did uh, tear out one of the barrels. Um, this one right here. It is a current carrying barrel, so um, meaning that uh, some of the current go actually goes through the heat sink since the uh, metal portion of these transistors is uh, one of the three legs. But uh, it's not terribly important, it just makes it slightly less efficient and uh, it will still be connected to the uh, printed circuit board electrically even without that barrel, it just won't be quite as good a connection. So I have my uh, four heat sinks here I'm just going to keep them in the same order just in case there's slight differences in them. But uh, on the board we have eight transistors, uh, four sets of two, two, four, six, eight, and we're going to be adding eight more transistors to this. So there's an empty spot here for one, an empty spot here, um, and etc. up the line. But uh, there's copper in those barrels, 
So I can't get a new transistor in there yet. So the next thing to do is to uh, take some solder wick and uh, suck the solder out of those barrels. You could also use a solder sucker, but I don't have one of those, so I'm just going to use solder wick. I went through the board and removed the solder from the barrels of all of the uh, non-populated FETs with my solder wick here. And uh, now the question is, uh, what transistors do I put in here? Uh, the safest thing to do would be to uh, go over here and read the part number on the transistors and use the exact same part. However, I couldn't find online the uh, um, what that part number corresponds to. It doesn't have a full part number on it. All I can tell is that it's made by International Rectifier, which doesn't really tell me anything. So I have to go by uh, the construction of this unit and uh, kind of estimate what was there. I know that these are N-channel transistors in a TO220 package. I know that they have to have a uh, on resistance that is probably 10 milliohms or less in order to function properly. I know that they have to have a charge ratio that's appropriate for fast switching. Um, uh, the voltage that they uh, need to be rated for is uh, probably at least 55 volts or so. Um, preferably a little bit more than that. Um, so there's a lot of different transistors you could use. However, uh, if you're not comfortable just selecting one, I have some uh, old transistors here that have been sitting around for almost 10 years now. They are made by International Rectifier, IRF3808. Um, they're 75 volt transistors, uh, FETs, end channel, 140 amp rating. So these will work very nicely for this. So I can put these transistors in here. However, if I do that, they will do absolutely nothing because if you look at the board closely, the, uh, um, the gate drive on these, going to the, uh, the gate of the transistors, is not going to be driven unless I populate these resistors. There's one resistor, looks like a 20 ohm resistor, to each gate of the active FETs here, and uh, these are missing. There's one for each transistor all the way down. So I need to add eight resistors to this board. Um, but uh, I'm not actually going to use a 20 ohm resistor, I'm just going to load it down with uh, a short. So I can take a piece of wire and jump her straight across it. And the reason I'm doing that is because I have a feeling that these transistors have a higher gate charge than the ones that are in this unit. So I don't think it'll be a problem um, to uh, just jump her straight across it. So I'm going to uh, add those, those wire jumpers. It only took me five minutes or so, but I have the eight jumpers on this board. I just took a piece of wire and soldered it right across, like I said. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is uh, over here, where there's this one capacitor and this cap is missing. Um, I don't have another capacitor like this, so I didn't think that I was going to be able to, uh, to populate that with a capacitor, but I looked around a little bit and uh, I found this cap. It's a capacitor made by Nichicon, uh, 1000 microfarads and 50 volts. Uh, standard aluminum electrolytic capacitor. It's much, much smaller than this one. Um, this one here is a 40 volt 2700 microfarad. I don't know what the ESR is or whatnot, but uh, this is a low ESR capacitor, this Nichicon one, with a rated ripple current of uh, 2 amps at 105 degrees Celsius. So it's also a high temperature capacitor, which is good. So I'm going to put this capacitor in here, making sure it's in the correct polarity and then continue on to the next step. I have the zero ohm jumpers on the board and I have this capacitor added on here. It's much smaller than the other one. I estimated it'll do about one-third as much work as the original, but one-third is better than zero, so that's on there. And uh, the next thing I want to do is put the transistors on it. Um, you'll also need uh, assorted nuts and bolts here. Um, to, uh, to bolt them to the heat sink. The originals came with uh, some screws, self-tapping self screws. I'm just going to use these. I bought these at a hardware store for about $1.50, so not too bad there. Uh, another thing I'm going to do is add some thermal compound. Don't waste your money on the expensive stuff, just go get the cheapest stuff you can find, basically. This is a Radio Shack standard silicone-based product, and uh, that'll work just fine. 
They didn't use any initially when they assembled this in the factory. Uh, I'm going to be driving this past its uh, intended limits, so I'll put a little bit on. But uh, the main thing is use a very small amount. Um, I'm going to put them back in the same order that uh, they were on there, just in case there's slight differences in them. Uh, make sure that they're on the right way, not backward. I should mention that uh, the main reason that these were removed in the first place is because the uh, heat sinks were in general on top of these resistors that we had to add. And it's almost impossible to, to get underneath them. There's just too much stuff in the way. three more times and I'll have uh, all the transistors on the board. I have the 16 transistors on here now, the eight originals plus the eight that we added. I have the uh, additional capacitor on here and those zero ohm jumpers. Uh, those are the only modifications that I'm going to make to it right now. So uh, have that all have it all soldered in also on the bottom. So now I just need to uh, put this back into the case.